good morning. Welcome to CCTV. It's Chris speaking, and the background you're looking at there, folks, is Lapland, uh, where I usually get my good auroras from. But what I'm showing you overlaid here is a squall line, what they call squall line, or the head of a storm. And the lightning covered five sta or three states, almost four states. Um, one continuous bolt of lightning struck in one place. So let me pull this down here, show you what happened. The squall line saw I had one more powerful punch to bring before morning. As several bolts of lightning lit up the early morning skies across the south United States. One struck, one strike made a historical impact. Now think of the Grand Canyon. That was a historical impact, right? This was across several states. And if you look at the Grand Canyon, it's pretty huge. Um, with this storm came, I'm showing you like uh, hail damage, power outages across three states. Uh, this EMI, electrical magnetic storm, was powerful. So enjoy these skies. I'm going to show you some squall lines that you probably are very familiar with on the internet, Facebook, um, but these squall lines, some of these new squall lines coming in are pretty intense and uh, they cover a large area. So you might get tornadoes that are statewide. I mean, not five miles wide, like 20 miles wide, 30 miles wide. Check these squall lines out. We'll put some music on. Personally, my, my opinion here, um, and proof from showing videos, is that this is the effect of wormwood or the planet X Nibiru system. The Bible calls it wormwood, and it could affect the Earth like this. And the Grand Canyon could have been cut out just like that. A lightning, huge lightning. So enjoy the rest of this little bit of a clip here of the purple skies. Actually, I think it was all red auroras and just got mixed in with the blue, um, but no green ones at all. So folks, with the uh, pole shift imminent, which is the, the turning of the Earth being pulled by the planets, I figured it was time to show you some videos like this. I want to show you some information. I'm trying to keep safe in these storms and um, what's happening in the Midwest, um, Iowa over, and the East Coast. Now you notice on this one thing, I freeze frame these UFOs below the sun with the red planet. Or the red object, um, little white boomerang 
watch it go. I freeze frame them so you'll see it. It's just moving. On the right of that, there's actually another one, but it's smaller and it takes off too. So, you see that red reflection behind the sun? I think that's all part of the smoke and mirrors. I don't actually think that's a planet no more. Um, because I've seen it as a lens flare on the mountains. Um, it's very interesting though. So I'm going to show you a few reports. That UFO on the bottom on the right. Those two are UFOs. I'm going to see if I can capture some still shots. and show you them, okay? So listen to my reports. And it's all about the weather in the Midwest. And what's going to happen this spring possibly. Look at the, you know, the trails all over too. The UFOs are pretty cool going in and out. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. You can see them. The severe weather season is off to a fast and deadly start. Last weekend, seven people were killed after tornadoes swept through Iowa. Meteorologist Tony Lawback joining us now. You spoke with our long range forecasters to find out what we should expect for the rest of the season and hopefully this is not a sign of things to come. Yeah, we uh, always hope that this time of the year, March, that transitional month that really kind of starts to get us into the severe weather season as we get in April, May and June, that really ramps things up. And I talked to one of our long range forecasters to exactly what we think is going to happen here over the next couple of months. The upcoming severe weather season uh, already has started, of course. Uh, it's been busy already here in March. March opened with an outbreak of severe weather and tornadoes in an area far from where severe weather usually strikes this time of year. We're talking about an area that usually starts off in March along the Gulf Coast and works its way into Tennessee and the parts of the southeast. But a slightly warmer than average Gulf may expand the zone of severe weather early in the spring. So early on, we're getting it kind of widespread, Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi Valley on east. Then we get into April, more spread out, okay, more spread out. It can still be in the eastern plains, not so much in the western plains. The western plains, often considered a large part of Tornado Alley, has seen lower than average severe weather and tornadoes over the last few years due to 20 years of severe drought across the southwest, a trend that will likely continue in 2022. You're going to need to break that drought to get more consistent action going on in Tornado Alley. We see it sparingly here and there, but it's really having an impact. And impact that may lead to areas further east seeing more severe weather again this year. You're going to continue to see higher pressure aloft over the southwest, and that will bring drier air into the plains and force the storm track and the, the worst of tornadoes to, to kind of develop farther east into the Mississippi and Tennessee Valley. Meaning the peak severe weather month of May will likely set up further east than usual. Look for the action to kind of focus more attention up across the upper Midwest and the Northeast. Now, as far as tornadoes go, higher in April compared to last year. But in May, we may see a downturn based on some of the patterns, based on coming out of the La Nina, the timing that we're coming out of the La Nina. So look for May to be a little downturn tornado, but not from wind damage and hail. And we're talking about the potential for severe weather here this weekend, again, mainly Friday into early Saturday. The good news with that, though, I guess if you want to call it good news, is that's more in line with where we typically see severe weather at this point in March. Unlike last weekend, where we ended up with tornadoes all the way up in Iowa, one of the earlier outbreaks we've seen in that part of the country in a while there, Adam. Tony, yeah, thank you for that update. We've uh, already had uh, a busy week and yeah, things going to continue here as we head through the next couple of days. get a warning for a severe thunderstorm warning, we will notify our campground hosts by radio and they'll go around and, and give all the campers heads up, especially the tenders, just in case they want to get to safety for the RVs, in case they want to pull their awnings in. You never know, in, especially in the summer months, when a storm is going to unexpectedly hit. So they should have a plan for what to do, whether they're going to go in their car, the, uh, the nearest wash house, just to take shelter when the winds get high or thunderstorms get close. Um, either way, they should have a plan to get out of their tent. If you're able to, check your phone and check the radar, see how long it's going to last so you can see if you should be waiting it out or you should 
find a more permanent safety structure. Storms come through and there's high winds, the likelihood of a branch falling um, is higher or a tree falling is higher. So they should be able to take some type of cover for a severe thunderstorm warning. We encourage whether you're hiking or camping or boating to have a plan. So what I'm saying in a nutshell is prepare yourself. When we can end up with a flood like that in Australia, like in February. But I'm going to end this video with a uh, nice, soothing uh, Finland Aurora time lapse. Not too fast. Hope you enjoyed this informational video. Comment, subscribe, and like. And also share to 10 friends today because... The algorithms are blocking me, so I need all the help I can get. God bless people. It's coming in.